Welcome to the Building Great Lives podcast, a podcast about real life, real issues, and finding real answers to life's most difficult questions. And now your host, Trent Gillum. Greetings, everyone. Trent here. Welcome to episode number 59 of the podcast. I'm glad you've joined the Building Great Lives journey. Before we get started, as always, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our monthly ministry partners and to you, the listener. You make this ministry possible, and I am excited to have you on the Building Great Lives team here at the Building Great Lives podcast. It's our desire to help people from around the world grow, heal, discover, and fulfill their unique purpose. Thank you for sharing these episodes. We're praying these messages of hope reach every possible person in every possible nation. In today's episode, we're going to talk about divine intervention. What is it, and does God still do it today? Divine intervention is when God steps in and changes the outcome of a situation. We all need God to intervene in our lives. Every single one of us face difficult situations that are beyond our ability to fix. It's in these times God will step in and work a miracle in your life. Scripture is filled with examples of man's need for divine intervention. The Bible is comprised of 66 books. The King James text has 1,189 chapters, 31,102 verses, 783,137 words. Only Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 21 and chapter 22 are exempt from the need of divine intervention. Genesis chapter 1 and 2 was about the perfect man, Adam and Eve, before they sinned. Revelation 21 and 22 is about the perfected man. The remainder of the Bible is a record of man's struggle and God's divine intervention. I am thankful that we have the Bible that we can look to for inspiration. The Bible is filled with examples of people that needed divine intervention. People just like you that went through difficult times but found out they did not have to go through them alone. There was a God that helped them. In the Old Testament, we find many examples We find that during the time that the children of Israel were enslaved to Egypt, some 400 years, multiple generations learning the pain of the whip, learning the bondage and the slavery, not just in the physical, but also in the mental and in the spiritual. They are enslaved. But there came a moment that they cried unto the Lord. And the Bible says that the Lord heard their groanings. And when he heard their groanings, he said, I will turn and I will make a way for them. In the midst of their bondage, in the midst of their trial, there was a God that intervened for them. We find this played out so incredibly throughout the history of Israel. From the moment that God delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh into the moment that they faced a Red Sea, unable to move forward, and when Pharaoh's army approached, unable to move back. And in the midst of not knowing what to do, a situation beyond their control, and when Moses lifted up the rod that was in his hand, a strong east wind began to blow all night until the waters of the Red Sea parted and the children of Israel walked across on dry ground. Israel could not fight against Pharaoh, for they were not a trained army. Israel could not part the Red Sea. God divinely intervened for them. Beyond the ability of man is the ability of God. 
And when God began to move, he made a way for them. I'm thankful that we have these incredible examples to remind us that God is able to do things that are impossible to us. When we find ourselves in difficult situations, God intervenes. God did this for Israel. We also find that in the time of Daniel, when those presidents of the kingdoms and governors and princes and counselors and captains consulted together because they were envious of Daniel's position and his approval of the king, they sought to kill him, knowing that he went to prayer. And they came together with King Darius and made a decree that no one could pray for 30 days to any other. And when King Darius signed this writing, and it was that it could not be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, when King Darius found out that Daniel was the one that would be brought forth. It grieved him because he loved Daniel, but he knew the law could not be altered. And so when Daniel was brought and thrown in the lion's den, when King Darius went back in the next morning to check on Daniel, to see if the lions had spared him, to see if God had intervened. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 22, we find Daniel saying to the king, My God hath sent his angel and shut the mouth of the lions. It's amazing to find all of the times that God intervened in the lives of his people. In the New Testament, we find the same occurrence. The man at the pool of Bethesda there for some 38 long years, waiting by a sheep market, waiting in a place where many there were sick, many there were waiting on the troubling of the water, where an angel would come down at a certain season, and the first one in the water was made whole. When I look at John chapter number five, and I begin to think about this man that is there 38 years, Jesus only lived and ministered some 33 to 33 and a half years, which means this man was likely waiting to be healed for five years before Jesus was ever born. But after 38 years, there came a moment that Jesus walked into the pool of Bethesda and he finds a man that has been waiting a long time and he asked that man, what do you need me to do? And the man says, Lord, I have no one to carry me to the pool. When I'm trying to go down, another steps in first, and they are healed, and I am left waiting. But that day was different for that man. He had been waiting for a long time for divine intervention, but his moment had come, and Jesus looks at him and tells him, take up thy bed and walk. He was healed immediately. There was a moment of divine intervention. The Bible also tells us in the book of Matthew, chapter number 8, verses 1 through 3, that there was a time that Jesus had been teaching in the mountain. And when the Lord came down the mountain and the multitudes followed, there met him a man with leprosy. Now, leprosy, there was no cure. Leprosy was so contagious that it made it impossible for you to live among your family and among your normal community. If you had leprosy, you had to live as an outcast on the outside of the city. When others would approach, you would have to holler, unclean, unclean, to make sure that you did not infect them, that they understood you are a disease person. You have this dreaded leprosy. Leprosy was not only painful, but it would slowly rot away at the flesh. This leper looked at the Lord and said, if you will, I know you can heal me. Jesus touched this leprous man and he healed him. There was a moment of divine intervention in this man's life. Now, I know we've talked about two powerful stories 
from the Old Testament, the children of Israel and Daniel. We've also talked about two powerful stories from the New Testament, the man at the pool of Bethesda. We've talked about Jesus healing the leper. And you may be thinking, well, that was a long time ago. What about today? Is divine intervention still available today? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 gives us the answer. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that could divinely intervene in the Old Testament. The same God that could intervene in the New Testament is the same God that wants to intervene in your life today. God is ready to work. God is ready to move. I can tell you personal example after example, time after time, where God made a way where there seemeth to be no way. Times that I was preaching and exhausted, driving many hours, many days in a row, trying to establish a church while continuing to evangelize. One night, even though I'm very accustomed to driving late at night, many hours, one night in Northern California, I began to drive home, and I got so sleepy that I just could not take it anymore. There wasn't anywhere to pull over, and normally I can fight through it. And as I was driving, I remember falling asleep and not being able to stop myself. On one side of a mountain pass, I literally felt myself laying down over the console of my truck with nothing that I could do to prevent it. And when I was jolted awake, realizing that I was still driving, I looked up and I was now on the other side of the pass. I can tell you that the last exit that I saw before falling asleep was Mountain House Parkway. I can also tell you that when I was jolted awake, I was right before Airways Boulevard in Livermore, California. I had crossed the entire mountain pass completely asleep. Divine intervention. There's no other explanation. There was no one else that could drive. Somehow in God's mercy, God intervened in a way that helped me and took me all the way across a mountain pass. There's no other explanation for that. Many people that don't believe would say, well, this could have been or that could have been. No, there is no other explanation for how I got across that mountain pass asleep except for the hand of God. And I want you to know the same God that helped me is ready to help you as well. God desires to intervene in your life as well. There came a time that Asaph, one of David's chief musicians, was experienced great distress and great trouble to the point that his heart felt like it was failing. And he wrote in the Psalms 73 and verse 26, My flesh and my heart faileth, But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. He felt like he was falling apart. But in the midst of his greatest time of distress, the Lord intervened on his behalf. The prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 59 and 19, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Divine intervention. The Apostle Paul confirmed in the New Testament when writing to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. God still intervenes in the lives of men. God is still ready to make a way for you. The word of the Lord tells us in Isaiah 43, and verse 16 in the King James, thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea 
and a path in the mighty waters. But I really like how the New English translation interprets this text. It says it this way. This is what the Lord says. The one who made a road through the sea, a pathway through surging waters. None of us in our own power have the ability to create a road through the sea or a pathway through surging waters. But Isaiah said God can do that because God's not limited. He is all powerful. He is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we could ask or think. Our God can do anything. No matter what you're struggling with, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing right now, divine intervention is real. It still works today. You may be facing something that you don't have the answer to. You're saying, God, I've tried everything that I know how to do and it didn't work. Now, God, I place it in your hands. And in the midst of you not knowing what to do, there'll be divine intervention that'll show up and work it out. And when God works it out, you will stand on the other side, not taking any credit for yourself because you couldn't do it on your own. But having to say, Lord, you made a way through my most difficult days. Lord, you made a way through my troubled waters. Lord, you made a way when I could not find my own way. You delivered. God gets all the glory for that. When we can't do it on our own, it's important to remind ourselves God still intervenes in the lives of man. It is his will to intervene in our lives. I want to encourage you, listener, no matter what you're facing, God is going to make a way. God's going to show you that he is faithful and will do all that he said he would do. I believe God intervenes on our behalf every single day. In this life, we'll never know all the times or all the ways God has intervened on our behalf. Be encouraged. Even when you can't see it, God is still at work in your life. You are here moving in our midst. You are here working in this place. You are way maker, miracle worker. You are here touching every heart. You are here healing every heart. You are way maker, miracle worker. You are here turning lives around. You are here mending every heart. You are way maker, miracle worker. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you are working. You never stop working. You are way maker, miracle worker. I feel something very strong in the Holy Ghost for you, listener. You're facing things, but God is sending you a word of reminder. He is still at work in your life. He is still making a way. He has seen every tear that you've cried. He has felt every fear that you've felt. He's been there through every moment of worry. When you have said, Lord, how is this going to ever work out? And the Lord said, when your ability runs out, you have not even began to reach into the depth of God's ability. For God will make a way where there seemeth to be no way. That's the word that God has for you today, listener. He will make a way. And as has become our tradition here at the Building Great Lives podcast, I want to pray for you, listener. I want to pray that God would strengthen your faith, that God would encourage you, that this simple reminder that God is in control working on your behalf even when you don't see it, working in that family matter, working in that job situation, making a way right now. The very things that has been troubling your heart, 
God is making a way ready to intervene on your behalf. Lord, I'm asking you, encourage every listener. Remind them you are still intervening in the lives of man. You are ordering our steps. You are lining up everything that comes into our lives for our good. Lord, I pray right now that you would reach down and intervene. Let there be a miracle take place in the lives of every listener. Confirm your word, Lord, again, that their faith fail not, that they could sense the very spirit of the Lord active, divinely intervening in their lives. And as always, thank you so much for listening. In the meantime, please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. If you enjoyed this episode, tell a friend. Maybe text them the link or share it on your social. You can find me on social at Trent Gillum, on Instagram at Rev Gillum. You can also reach me at Building Great Lives Podcast at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, let's. Keep building. You've been listening to the Building Great Lives podcast, a member of the Real Life Church Network. Join us next time as we dig deeper into life's most challenging questions.